All right. So now we're now we're live and in color. We're recorded. So good morning. Welcome. I hope everyone had a weekend, a good weekend. I'd like to start off with wins. Uh, tell me some wins, folks. People want to have calls. Tell me some wins. Had a good prospecting session. Had good appointments. Had a good closing, good listing, whatever. Tell me some wins. This is JC. I actually picked up two buyers this weekend, and one of them is also selling. So that was a good win for me this weekend. No, that's a huge win. Yeah. Right? I mean, huge. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Super, super stoked. Tell us about that. How'd you pick them up? Uh, I picked up the buy sell is from my mom, bless her heart. So Uh, she's a referral. Oh, three words you never want to hear past your name, right? Bless her heart. (laughs) Well, (laughs) sometimes she just needs to stop talking, but yeah. (laughs) Hello. Yeah. So tell us, so it was a referral from your mom. Yeah, and so I actually met with them yesterday. Um, they happened to be outside when I was dropping my kids off. So went and met with them yesterday, and um, we're going to do some stuff to get their house ready to sell and then start looking. So follow up with them. And then my other one I picked up off of my sign on my townhouse in, Dur- in Draper. And oh, they're ready to call. buy in the next, uh, like, 35 days. Yeah, yeah. Sign calls typically tend to be a little further down in the process, you know. So like web leads are web leads can be anywhere from two days to two years out, you know, depending on where they are in the process. But that's what you know. So the beginning process is what I call the um, the passive phase of start. You know, they're starting to gather and it's a research phase. But when the active phase is when they're actually in their car driving around, and so that's why signs are awesome because those people have. You know, they may have spent the last year on somebody's website, and then they called you and you got them. You know, right. <clears throat> so that's the cool part about um, focusing on the active t- participations or the active, you know, phases. Anyway, anybody else got any wins? Great job, JC. <clears throat> anybody Thank else? You. No. Okay. <clears throat> so, what are some things you're struggling with? So if only one person had a win, that means the other 11 have struggles, or 12, whatever's on the call. <clears throat> so anybody struggling with anything? No? My okay. uh, my closing this week, the guy didn't do all the repairs like he agreed to, and we found this out yesterday when the other agent contacted me. <clears throat> yeah, that's a transactional thing. That's uh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm talking more <laughs> about like lead generation and setting appointments, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. So, all right, well, let's get into the uh, the things we're going to, uh, that I plan to talk about. <clears throat> Number one is calendar, right? I mean, you guys got to have a calendar. Um, those that attended the class that we did on Friday, there was an impromptu class. I, I mean, I decided on Wednesday, <clears throat> Amy called down to, um, to uh, the Miller Conference Center, got us a room for Friday. We went, we had about uh, 10 people show up. It turned, you know, I thought it was a good class. Um, it was really uh, focused on what you need to be doing, uh, but but time blocking is the key. Uh, if I can recommend a book to everybody, it's called The One Thing, right? So basically, it, the one thing, the premise is what's the one thing you could do that would make everything else not necessary, right? So, and what is that? Lead generation. We talked about that. I don't care what problem you have in a real estate business. I can solve that problem with lead generation because if you think about it, if you don't have enough listings, you get a lead gen problem. If you don't have enough money, you get a lead gen problem. If you have the wrong types of clients, you get a lead gen problem. So lead gen will really solve, you know, 99% of your real estate issues. <clears throat> so... So anyway, so lead so but so it's so important. To, uh, somebody share, hello. You, you know, it, you would not believe how loud it is when you do anything like hit keyboards, um, you know, ruffle papers or anything like that. It just comes through loud. But even last week when I went through to my, I went and ran into my room real quick. I pushed the door and the squeak and the hinge came across so loud. <clears throat> People are like, "What was that?" You know. So anyway, just be cognizant of that. So if you're going to be moving around, put your phone on mute. So anyway, so um, calendar, so time blocking, time blocking is so, so, so important that you set aside, you know, two hours at least, you know, maybe two hours, hour and a half or whatever, just set it aside that you're laser focused, you know, don't have your email open, turn on, one of the best things you'll ever do in your career is turn off all the 
silly notifications on your phone, right? So you're not getting Twitter notifications. You're not getting Facebook notifications. You know, you don't need to be, you don't need to be notified every time somebody likes something, right? It doesn't mean you don't check Facebook. Facebook can be a good tool, but that doesn't mean it controls you and you stop doing whatever it is you're doing to check to see what somebody liked. So if those are just distractions that are keeping you from the, one of the most important things you can do, and one of the most important things you can do is, uh, is get more business, right? <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, so it's really, really important to time block and just have focused, focused time, right, to where, you know, you got everything, all your distractions away from you. The key is have all your numbers or whatever it is you plan to do that day, have everything, for, you know, ready the night before so that when you sit down to focus, you don't have any distractions. You're not looking up numbers. You know, you look up numbers. Next thing you know, you're reading a blog and, you know, God knows what you're doing next, right? I mean, I suffer from that as well. Trust me. <clears throat> so, so it's very, very important to get that time block into your calendar. <clears throat> as Brian Buffini always says, we don't make time to lead generation. We make time to do an addendum. We don't make time to go on an inspection. We make – we, uh, I mean, we don't make time to lead generate. We make time to go on an inspection. Does that make sense? I mean, lead generation is just built in your calendar. It's just there. Nothing else should be able to penetrate that. You know, if you if you lead generate from, say, 830 to 1030, and someone says, can you show me a house at 10 o'clock? If you had a listing appointment at 10 o'clock and a buyer asked you to show a house, what would you tell them? Say, I'm not available until about 1130, 12 o'clock, and I see you then. <clears throat> well, yeah. Well, your lead generation is just as important as any other appointment you have. In fact, it is the most important appointment you'll ever make, right? <clears throat> because that appointment causes all the other appointments to happen. So it's so, so critical that you really, really focus on that and really embrace that concept that you don't make time to lead generate. You make time for everything else, okay? I mean, I, I, I can't put enough emphasis on that. I'm going to beat that drum I mean, they'll, they'll have it on my tombstone. You know, you may, you don't make time to lead generate, you know, Rob Aubrey, you know. <clears throat> so, um, video is being used by, not available for, <clears throat> oh, I don't know what that means. Okay, something popped up. So, anyway, um, so, so, so important. Now, the other thing I want to talk about, also on your calendar, make sure you mark all the days you're going to take off, right? Put those days on your calendar, right, so that you can just tell your partner, one, and then, two, take the day off. Put your phone on do not disturb. <clears throat> you know, put your phone on do not disturb. And then take the day off. There's nothing more refreshing than a guilt-free day off. So what happens is if you don't have the day off on your calendar, you know, and, and then what you do is you wind up not working, but you're kind of feeling, you're kind of sluggishly working. You may take a call here and there and do this here and there. So what winds up happening is you're not productive. Right. So you're clearly not going to be productive on a day like that. So then what happens is you really didn't work and you didn't get the day off. So it's like you have the worst of both worlds. So enjoy time off. Right. I mean, the holidays, it's the winter time. Holidays are here. I mean, people, you're going to be taking time off. So take it off. Uh, it's OK to take that time off, but put it on your calendar and by golly, take the day off. You know, now don't be afraid to call your partner on a day off. If you got one day off or if you're taking two days off, I mean, it's no big deal to re to talk to your partner for <clears throat> for two minutes. I mean, that, that, you know, that's not, you know, that's, I mean, you don't have to, but I'm just saying, you know, just why well, it's not that big of a deal if you did. Right. <clears throat> Let's talk about the other thing Rob, real quick. I want to talk about affirmations. Um, so um, how many people, you know, do people here do affirmations? So I know Scott and I do affirmations. So here are my affirmations. I just put them up on the screen. <clears throat> so Scott has his affirmations when I was Scott's filling partner. So, but I would say I follow my prospecting schedule. I enjoy helping agents grow their business. I do two recruit presentations every week. I attract qualified agents every day. I mean, those are my affirmations, right? You, I want to live by those, right? So you want to have a good calendar and you want to start off your day with your partner. Talk to your partner. Do some affirmations. Encourage each other. Really get a right frame of mind because, again, the most important two hours in your whole career is this lead generation block of time. There is no more important time, period. You know, all the great appointments you have, they come from lead generation. And so if you don't, if you're not doing anything to generate leads, then they're just coming by accident. So here's some of the notes I got from the Mike Ferry call. 
<clears throat> right? So uh, he's talking about normal versus abnormal, right? So uh, we're heading into a normal market, right? We were in an abnormal market, right? So we're we're shifting from out of from a seller's market to a normal market. Where's the one I'm looking for? <clears throat> so listings will be on the market longer. Unskilled agents get, or unskilled agents were able to take a listing and sell it. Now they're not going to be able to sell it, right? <clears throat> so normal market normal markets exposes the lack of skills. So if you don't if you're not working on your skills, if you took a listing in the abnormal market, it just sold in spite of you. So it had nothing to do with you. It had to do with the fact that you were you know got a listing in that type of market, right? Agents that lack skills and discipline are are going to see start seeing uh or seeing less production and agents will start leaving the business and i don't know about you but that to me that's a celebration <clears throat> now i don't want that to be any of you but when i mean what reason why i say it's a celebration is because you know the <clears throat> you have the biz, agents are going to fall out of the business in a higher proportion than the business drops so let's say the market drops 10%, I'll bet you'll see 25% of the agents leave or 20%. Even if it's 15, it doesn't matter. And then the ones that didn't drop out are going to be highly less, you know, they're just going to be less productive. And then that means there's going to be more business for those that are working hard. Right at the end, they talked about, um, you know, the, uh, these, are the, these are the solutions, right? Agents have never been in a normal market, need to reestablish their relationship with their database must convert to active prospecting versus passive marketing, calling somebody, right? Set appointments now. So he's saying set appointments for December if you can. You know, get on the phone, just set appointments. Uh, stronger pre-qualifying, right? Stronger pre-qualifying because people that think the market's still going up crazy in prices may be unrealistic with their price. And if they could sell at that price, they may consider it. So you got to strongly pre-qualify. So, you know, and then, uh, and then he's saying being 100% honest on pricing. But able to handle each objection, being aggressive on asking to sign a contract, and then 30, 60 day skills, working on your skills, development, and role playing. <clears throat> so when I sent out the email about how many, who was interested in role playing the last time, the only people that responded were JC and Jared Wangsgard. So <clears throat> um, if you guys want to role play, I recommend you role play at least you know one or two little scripts every day. Say you want to work on Fizbo's, role play with four or five different people. There's um. There's wet, there's Facebook groups, role play, just type in role play for real estate agents, something like that. You'll find Facebook groups where you can jump in there, description dialogues groups on Facebook, where if you you know, we don't if you can't get enough partners here, but be diligent. If you're gonna jump in and role play and say I'm gonna role play with somebody every day at eight thirty, make sure you're on the call. Don't hang them out to dry. So but the best way to, to improve your skills is to take one simple script and role play it every day for like a month. But do it with different people. And then the people that are role play partners, now you've got to be, um, if your partner says, hey, I'm working on this one objection, you know, give it to me, then, then give it to them. But don't be, you know, don't be so hard that they never get the appointment. The goal is to let them set the appointment. The goal is to, in practice, is to get the role play, is to get it down to where you're actually doing it. And then um, you're, you're, you're feeling the experience of setting the appointment on the phone. And that's important, right, to do it over and over and over in your mind. <laughs> so. Very, very important. Role play, you know, think about it, right? So in the NFL, if you're an NFL fan, and I'm just going to use basic numbers, and these numbers could be skewed depending on how the game rolls out. But think about it. If, if each team had the ball for 30 minutes of the game, and then there's each play is like last about, say, eight seconds, and there's like, um, let's say there's, um, say, 60 plays, um, they, they wind up getting off 60 plays, and each play is eight seconds. So what's that, 480 seconds? So let's take 480 <clears throat> divided by 60, right? That's eight minutes, eight minutes. That like, So if you're an NFL quarterback and you got a $100 million contract, you're literally playing eight minutes a week. <clears throat> I mean, you're in the game for an hour, but I mean, you're on the bench and you're in between plays, but the actual playing time is like eight minutes. So now let me ask you this. Do you think they, how much time do you think they practice? I mean, they practice, they're in the film room, for hours upon hours, they're out on the field, getting their keeping their body in shape. I mean, during the during the season, they don't, you know sometimes they do less just because their bodies are getting so beat up, but they keep them in shape. But the point is, they they spend a whole lot more time practicing than they do playing. Real estate is the only industry that can be very very lucrative 
where people do not practice their skills. It's like, hello, if you want to be competitive, if you've got 10,000 agents and there's only 1,200 listings in Salt Lake County or whatever, you know what I mean, or 1,200 sales in a month, 1,000 sales in a month, you've got to be highly skilled to get there. So you've got to work on your skills, and role play is one of those. And then, um, you know, it's just role play. I mean, <clears throat> more than one partner. I mean, you want to role play with multiple partners. Ideally, you'd have one role play partner for every day of the week. <clears throat> and then after a month or two, switch up, find new ones. Just say, hey, it's time to refresh and get different role play partners. Because you go through your script with them, and then they go through whatever script they're working on with you. So, and then you get to hear. And the cool part is you get to hear both sides. And we're only talking – you know, I mean, this is like a, a less than a 10-minute call. I mean, if you're each five minutes, I mean, I'd be surprised, right? You're just going to go through a basic little script. So, and then just, but be a good role play partner. You know, be enthusiastic. Be there. Pay attention to what they're saying. Really be a, a, a seller. Give, you know, behave the way people have behaved with you in real life. But, you know, with a, on a positive note, trying to give them the appointment. I mean, they, they got to earn the appointment, but... Um, if you're doing a phone role play, but if you're doing a, uh, you know, a, 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 you know, a listing presentation role play on the phone, then obviously that's a little different, but the, but you got to have to, you have to just increase your skills if you're going to survive as the market shifts. Now the market hasn't quite shifted yet. It's shifting. It's shifting. <clears throat> now I don't think we're in a danger zone of prices plummeting or anything like that. You're going to see price are, you're going to see price reductions, but I think my opinion is price reductions are more have to do more with uh, pr uh, sellers overshooting the market than prices actually coming down. You know where the market kept going, and uh, I mean the market started tapering off, but the sellers kept going up, and now the sellers had to get realistic. So I don't really see price uh, prices coming down as much as I see sellers overpricing. Does that make sense? But the thing is, you're going to have to be skilled to compete uh, for the listings, and you're going to have to be skilled. See, sell, one of the things that working with sellers that want to overprice it is you have to be able to handle confrontation, right? I mean, and that's the difference between a listing agent and a buyer's agent. A listing agent can manage confrontation, and they're not afraid of it. It's not a big deal to confront a seller, and even though they want more money, but you just have to let them know, well, that's, you know, it's not going to happen, but you have to do it with statistics, right? You have to do it with statistics. That's how it happens. So anyway, so um, any thoughts or questions or concerns? So I know I went on. That was like a 20-minute sentence. So uh, any thoughts, questions, concerns over there? No. So... So let's summarize, right? Let's get your let's get your time blocking on your calendar, right? <clears throat> Do affirmations with your uh, your accountability partner. Find role play partners. They can be, you know, find role play partners. There's nothing more important than your prospecting time. And I hope I made that real clear. And I hope you really get it. I mean, I hope that you know intellectually you get it. But when and and to, until someone says, hey, can you show me a house? At this time, and you say, and you look at your, and you, you know, you already know your time block, and you say, hey, I'm not available at that time. You know, can we do it a little later? That's when you start to get it in your heart how important this lead generation sessions are going to be. Because I'm telling you, things are changing, and they're going to be different. You're going to have to work harder for each other. But the cool part is, as long as you're willing to work, you're going to, your, your, uh, <clears throat> your market share is going to increase. That's the cool part. You're actually going to make more money. But well, you got to apply yourself at just a, 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 and not a whole lot, but I mean, but certainly more. So anyway, <clears throat> that's all I have. So. Hey, Rob, you. are you going to. Go ahead. Are you going to do vision boards? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that real quick. I was going to do a session here at my house. I was just going to invite everybody over to the one to do a vision board. You know, I have a great color laser printer. If you have a bunch of images, you know, I would encourage you, you have to have the images before you get here. And if you, you know, and then when you get here, you just sit there and email and, you know, email me a bunch of images. I'll print, I'll send them to the printer, you know, and you can sit there. I mean, I got my dining room table can fit at least two, maybe three. I got my uh, island counter and I have a couple fold up tables. I mean, we could have, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll figure it out. We can have a bunch of people here <clears throat> doing vision boards. So if anybody's interested in doing a vision board, send me an email. Send me an email. It has to be an email, right? Not a text, just an email. And put vision board as the subject line. 
Just put vision board as a subject line and then an email say I'm interested. So, Rob, I, if, go ahead. It's, it's Barbara. It might be a good time yeah. to uh, establish those proclamation statements um, while we're doing those vision boards. Yeah. Get that all sure. done before the first of the year. Right. Make affirmation. You know, I mean, help people build their affirmations. I can do a call on affirmations too, if you like, on how to actually do affirmations. There's rules to the creating them. So the basic right. rules are, it's called PPP, right? Personal, present, and positive. So like, for example, uh, the weight loss is the easiest one to say. So if I say I want to lose weight, I'm not focused on, uh, what am I focused on, right? Your subconscious doesn't understand the past. It doesn't understand the future. So what that means, so the only thing I'm focused on right now, if I say I want to lose weight, I'm not affirming losing weight. What I'm affirming is that I'm overweight. So in order to affirm to lose weight, you have to brainwash yourself. You have to reprogram your mind. So you would say something like, I eat right and exercise every day. So even though you're not doing that, that's fine. We're, we're, it's not that we're trying to lie to ourselves. It's we're reprogramming our brain. We just have bad programming. Is The only reason why you're overweight is bad programming, because you eat bad food. So to reprogram your mind, you have to tell yourself every day, day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out, that I eat right and exercise every day so that when you open up the refrigerator, you make, start making good choices. But it takes a while, but you have to reprogram your mind. So <clears throat> that's what affirmations are. We can do a whole call on that, and we can actually do work through a couple, and then you'll get to see how it's done. So <clears throat> um, – and if you want to do those, too, send me another email, say affirmations and emails. But we can do that lesson when we get here, if you want, or we can make that a separate call and we can work through, make it an a online workshop if you like. So it's up to you guys. <clears throat> but I think I'll do a bunch of calls, but I'd love to have that here, um, you know, at my house and just we'll invite everybody over and we'll just make it happen. Okay? Great. Good. Hey, Rob, I just wanted to quickly chime in. This is Mary. I just wanted to quickly chime in on the time blocking. One thing that I did – this week as I put a setting on my phone, so from 8 to 10, um, it's just going to automatically not take incoming calls. Right. So I can yes, my you just phone. put your phone on Do Not Disturb. Yeah, so but I set, it up, I set it up so that it automatically does that Monday through Saturday, 8 to 10. So right. I don't have to go in and out. It's just automatically going to turn it off Perfect. and then turn it back on. The other thing that I used to do was uh, called real-time voicemail, where I would actually change my voicemail every day. You know, today's December 3rd, so it's Monday, so my voicemail would say, hey, it's Rob Aubrey, and I'd be real enthusiastic. Hey, this is Rob Aubrey. It's Monday, December 3rd. I am in the office today. However, I won't be available till approximately 1045, maybe 11 o'clock. I'm in a meeting, so go ahead, leave your name and number, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. Make it a great day. I mean, that was my voice every day, but it was real time. So that way, if somebody called at 8.30 or 9, and they heard it, it was saying, hey, he, they, you know, they didn't go into a black hole. They knew. And then also, too, after a while, your clients get trained not to call you to 11. So, and then if they have a problem, say, with a loan or if they're a buyer, they're going to call the, um, they're going to call the lender, and then it gets solved. And then, you, you know, because they're going to call you first, but they say, oh, man, he's not going to call me for two hours. I'm going to call the lender. And perfect. That's fine. Let them call the lender and solve the problem. And then that way there, you're not managing things that other people could actually do. <clears throat> what a great use of time. But but uh, you got to. But here's the thing. You've got to be disciplined to change it. Nothing worse than calling a guy and their voicemail says they're out of town and it was last month. You know, that doesn't that doesn't instill confidence in me that you're going to return my call when it's been a, you haven't fixed your voicemail a month. So. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, anything else, guys? Guys and gals? If not, I am going to uh, end the call and just wish everybody a real happy day. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye now.